Hey everyone, in this video we are going to show you how to make pixel art just using simple uh, Google Sheets. Uh, so let's get started. So for me, I'm just starting off in my Google Drive account. Um, you can use whichever like drive you prefer, um, or you can just go straight to a Google Sheets page. So all we're gonna do is open up a new Google Sheet page. So let's go here. I'm just gonna select the uh, new feature um, and I'm going to pull up a new Google Sheet. Um, and we can name that whatever you really want to, but let's just start by uh, naming it pixel art. So in the upper hand corner, just type that in and name it pixel art or whatever type of name you want to give it. Awesome. Uh, the next step we want to do is what we're going to do in the upper um, left hand corner is we're going to add um, our question and answer block. So here what we're going to get them to do is you can pick a strand topic theme, but really you just want to type in like um, box A1, the questions that you're going to ask like uh, students or whoever who will be answering this along with the answers right beside it. And then for me, like what I like to do is I like to bring these all the way down. Let's just say we're going to have like 10 questions. I go down to cell 11. And then if you want to add like a border or anything to this, you can simply go to the borders right beside the paint can. And if you click on that, you can make an outer edge border. I just find it looks a little nicer. I also play with the border weight and color a little bit. Um, but again, this is not something you like have to do. Um, this is just something that is like a, is an option if you want to make like thicker lines and whatnot. Now you can do so. Um, for me, I also like to um, just highlight the like the top two, so the question answers, and just center them. But this is just personal preference, obviously, so it does not need to be uh, done there. Okay, perfect. Now I do like to color code these because I do find that these actually will help later on. Uh, to have these color coded. So I'm just going to put like a light blue for questions, then set something like a yellow um, for answers. It just makes it a little in easier to distinguish um, in my experience. Perfect. Now, really what we're just going to do here is I'm just going to put in some sample questions just to get started. And these are not like the questions I would ask, but just for the uh, context of seeing how this would work. Um, there we go. One plus one, two plus two. And of course, I'll just put in like sample answers of two and four. Hopefully I did that math right there. Okay, so now we have this. So this is like the fundamental start. Now the other thing we're gonna wanna do here is after we get to B, we're going to want to shrink like the rest of these cells into smaller squares so they take the form of pixels, okay? So like there, it, now this really depends on what like computer you're using in terms of how to do this. I just try to highlight all of mine um, from C all the way to Z. And then what I try to do is bring these into like a closer to like a square format. So you can see how I'm shifting along the Z. And when I do that, what will happen is now I have just made all of these a lot smaller. And now it looks more in like pixel form. So we can make those like 8 bit, 16 bit uh, different colors. Okay. So now you should have like a, a context just for like what this is going to look like. And the really the next step here is uh, like you can do it two ways. Um, for me, I've started adding like a curricular focus of whatever this is. And that's just something that's worked for me. So if you choose to do this, that's like totally fine. I just click like two cells, um, like two rows and columns. And then I change the color and this might not be the best color. I usually use a darker color. Um, and then I type over it. So let's just say like, I'm just gonna put um, curriculum foci and then X, Y, Z, or in this case, X, Y, yeah, there we go, X, Y, Z. And like, of course I can make this like white and I can blow this font up a little bit just to make it a little like easier, obviously to read. Um, and that would be my next step. So I would change this here, white font. You can explore with the font, but now like I can put like what the curriculum focuses or instructions when they get here. And I might add sometimes like a prompt, like answer questions to unveil the art. I just do it this way, but keep in mind, I sometimes add this later based on how big my pixeled art is going to be. So now my next step really is here. Um, okay, so let's design something in pixel art. How do I do this? Well, really it's quite simple. All you're going to do is click on like whatever cell you want to like color. Um, and I don't know, like let's just make something simple. So I'm gonna just add here, go to the paint drawer and maybe I add like orange. I'm gonna make this sun here for a second. So 
Uh, maybe I'm starting to like just click on each one and I can copy and paste this obviously as well. So one thing you'll start noticing, you can actually like click and highlight to get more. You can copy and paste. So there's a lot more efficient ways, but for right now, I just want to get people used to like, hey, what could like uh, the sun look like here? And so I'm just making a basic element with orange um, and you can see me go through. I would encourage you though, as you're getting started, if you're using this kind of activity to use different colors. Uh, and the reason for that is it can become really handy later on based on giving questions to have multiple colors um, embedded. So here's my sun. This is just a basic one, obviously. And then I can highlight the rest and I can make all of these orange. I think I forgot a row there. I may have made a mistake. There we go. And I can just copy and paste too, but just for everyone watching, we don't know the different skills. So feel free to use that. Okay, so here's my sun. I'm not saying it's the best sun, but it is a sun nonetheless. All right. Now, what you normally want to do is you want to fill in all of your answers first so that you have all of this done. So ideally, I would write all of my questions and all of my answers. Now for me in my most recent one, I focus solely on operations, uh, primarily in junior division. So I wrote all the questions, all of the answers. And the reason for that, I took a screenshot of it. And in a second, what we are going to do is we are going to remove these answers and have um, students uncover select blocks, uh, which means they have to answer correctly until like, and then more of these blocks will pop up. So what I mean by that is, well, here, let me just show you. So I'm going to click on like a couple of these blocks and what you have to do is you really have to use like um, like your shift key. Uh, sometimes on a Mac it's different. So I use a command. So I'm clicking and highlighting on my command block and let's just highlight just these ones for now. So you can see I've highlighted quite a few blocks here of the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to format and I'm going to scroll down until uh, you see conditional formatting. So conditional formatting. And when I click on that, on the far right, it's going to open up like a series of like cell structure, uh, data and info. So we're going to scroll down to where it says cell format if, and where it says is not empty, we're going to scroll all the way down until it says custom formula is. Okay. So click on that. And now right underneath where it says custom formula is, we want to do like absolute values here. So right underneath where it says value or formula, to make this true, we're going to add an equals uh, sign. And then remember, we're going to start with the first question. So the first question is like in cell two, but the answer is in B2. So what we're going to do is we're going to put like the money sign B and uppercase uh, money sign two. And what we want to do is we want to use the term if um, any other number, like if anything other than, and how we do that on like our uh, computers is just by putting in these two symbols uh, together. Whoops, not that. Um, we're gonna put in uh, these like does not equal. So if anything, if B2 does not equal two, that means so if B2 does not equal two, then we are going to change the color of the cell. And what cell we're gonna change it to is we're gonna change this cell to white because we want, only want it to be orange when they get the answer correct or when they type in the letter two. So I'm gonna click my paint can. I'm gonna select the answer to be white or if you had a back background, you could change it to whatever the background color is, but I'm gonna click white. And then once I hit done, you'll notice that nothing really changes right away because I still have my answer in. So what I have to do is I have to click on this cell I'm going to go up to where it says two and I'm going to hit backspace and click off the page. And now look what happened. So now those ones I clicked are removed. So I usually start with all of my answers in. So I know that I can highlight the right blocks, but then after I do this a few times, you'll see, oh, okay, now I've got it all. So I don't need any more. So let's try that one more time. So now we want to do B three because we're going to get rid of this four. So I'm going to click on the block and I'm going to use command on my Mac, but you can like do shift on like if you're on a PC or something else, I'm just going to select a few more. I'm going to go back up to format, scroll down to conditional formatting. I'm going to change the format cells. It is not empty. And I'm going to go all the way down to custom formula inside of this. I'm going to type equals and then uh, money sign B. 
uh, money sign. And this time, because we're in the third cell, so we're going to go three. And remember, we want that does not equal, or if it's not equal to, and in this case, four, we're going to make our paint can white. And we're going to hit done. So once we hit done, now the rule applies. So we have to actually click on where our answer was. Let's hit like backspace. And now when I do that, it will disappear. So and you notice I haven't taken them all away, but this is what would normally would happen. So let's say they were all away or at least close to it. You would send students a link to this. I would actually go and make a copy for them and show them how to do this. But now, like, let's say a student got to this. Oh, what's one plus one? I know the answer is two. So they type in two and look what happens. They start solving it. So when I go to two plus two and if the answer is four, then it will fill in the sun and we know we're done. So this can obviously get a lot more complicated. Um, you can post this to Google Classroom, force, uh, force a copy for every single student. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of what to do to get started. I'd really like you to try your own. Please share it with me if you like. Uh, and thanks for watching the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.